Yeah. You see, now, 200 years ago, when steam engines came out, they wanted to know what was the best thing they could put in their engine to make it go forwards. And um, before then, we didn't have a calorimeter. We didn't know about energy in materials. So they got coal and they got wood and they got all different things and they set fire to it and they looked at how much energy it, it uh, emitted to heat up a certain amount of water. And they called this uh, a calorie, how many calories they had in there. So even if you buy it now, um, you can get the calorific content of your coal. So uh, calories are a bit of a flawed metric because somebody many years ago thought, whoa, why don't we get a piece of steak, put it in a bomb calorimeter, set fire to it and see what happens. And we'll add a, a kilo calorie to that and we'll make these um, calories relevant to food as well. We're not the only people to query how ridiculous that is. That's why you've got the glycemic index. A bunch of researchers in the 1960s in Oxford said this is absolutely ridiculous. That's not actually looking at what happens to food when you put it into your body. So they invented the glycemic index. I'm not saying that's really good, but that just shows that academics have been questioning the validity of calories as a, um, a source or a metric. So um, just a silly thought experiment for you. Um, if I got coal and I've got wood and the coal is fat, let's say, and the wood is protein, uh, they've got different calorific values. Obviously, I couldn't live off either of them. But if I've got a fire and the coal says it's going to give me uh, a thousand calories and the wood says it's going to give me a thousand calories, oh, maybe. Do you know what? I'm going to put the coal in the fire for the energy, but this wood I'm going to make some stuff out of. So straight away, if I take half of those bits of wood out and make a seat or I, I go and make a table out of it, well, that's what protein does. You see, if you've got a thousand calories of protein, it doesn't go and make energy. You don't put it under fire and burn it for energy. That's not what happens. Uh, you get your hair made and you get your nails made and you get your bones made and you get your muscles made. And that also is actually really true of fats, because fats, as we just said, are cofactors in hormones, fat soluble vitamin storage. Um, obviously, fats are essential for uh, neurotransmitters, for uh, wrapping around myelin sheaths. Now, if I had another source of energy, which was a thousand calories and it didn't do any of those things, then, well, that's the best thing, isn't it? That is the best thing to stick on the fire, because I wouldn't mind keeping these fats for all those sort of maybe 40 percent to make stuff and these bits of wood, which is the protein, that makes loads of things. And I'll use the rubbish over there that can't do anything to give me energy for just giving me energy. And that's the, that's the biggest flaw of, well, one of many flaws when it comes to looking at calories. Because calories are ridiculous <laughs> as a measurement of energy that the body's going to use. Simple, it really is that simple. So let's reframe the question. Now, some people need more fat. Some people need more protein really is that simple if you keep your hormones down if you keep your insulin levels down you are going to push your fat oxidation uh, basically to its peak and that's it that's 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 the way we live we eat proteins and fats that doesn't really spike insulin we tell people to listen to their body to listen to their hunger signals eat when you're hungry so that's that's what's that got to do with calories nothing Calories are a waste of time as a proper metric. Go with your hunger signals uh, and make sure that you eat satiety. Don't go beyond satiety. Um, try and keep your insulin down. If you're somebody that thrives on fat, you will know that because you'll see your body composition going the right way and your health going the right way. If you put in 80% fat, 20% protein, and your health doesn't work, and I was speaking to Ayana about her training today, we both agreed that if you want to build muscle, you probably need a bit more protein. You probably don't need so much fat. You'll do well. And that's that's us. That's what this group is about. You as individuals, don't think you've got to do one thing. Don't believe um, even the calculation of how much protein per body weight. You do it and look in the mirror, use your tape measure, look at your clothes. Whatever happens to your body is telling you whether it's right or wrong. And uh, trust, once you get into your body's answering and signaling, so you've always got to answer the signal. That's really important. If it tells you you don't need to eat anymore, then don't eat anymore. So if you were doing your blood glucose, you will think, wow, I am really healthy. This is great. My blood glucose is being managed. But what that graph is also showing you is the background insulin going up and up and up. What was happening is the bodies for those people in that particular study 
they were requiring more and more insulin to get the same result. And at some point, as you can see from the graph, there's a tipping point where there's so much insulin being produced, it just can't keep doing it. The pancreas just can't keep up. And that's when it starts to dip in production. That's when the blood glucose goes up. Maybe 10, 15 years previously, if we were measuring blood glucose and insulin, we would have predicted a problem, but we weren't doing that. And even now, most people just measure their blood glucose. They don't see the problem.